Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. Broadcasting also through the iHeart app and yorbamedia.com. All right, I'm joined by Buck French, CEO of Fantex. One of the most unique ways to take a cash flow and turn it into a publicly traded stock. This is some amazing stuff. All right, bud, uh, you are not only working in the uh, sports arena, the professional sports arena, but you're also uh, delving into the world of entertainment. That's got to be cool. Yes, yeah, so we're uh, absolutely a goal of ours is beyond just sports is to enter into the entertainment sector, work with musicians and actors, and um, it, it, it's certainly an interesting uh a sector to, to, to focus on. Yeah. Now, how do you pick out, I would imagine that the lifespan of, of a film or a television or a, a musical uh, star could be, could be longer than, than a pro athlete because they're not quite as subject to some of the same risks. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, each, each sector, whether it's uh, football versus golf or baseball versus music or, uh, you know, acting, each has its own unique kind of uh, positives and negatives associated with it. Right. Um, certainly in, in uh, the, the music side of the equation, for example, you could be, if, if successful, could be paid royalties for, you know, in perpetuity um, uh, versus an athlete that obviously has a shorter uh, career span. Uh, all, all of them have different risks based on competitiveness and, and, uh, and their own capabilities if you will let's circle back if i can just a little bit on the uh, uh the valuation how how are these uh, brands because now they've moved from just being humans into a, a brand a, a product that is is valued how do you determine the valuation so that i mean obviously the market determines the share price but how do you determine the initial valuation on 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 what you should come out with Sure. Uh, great question. So we look at, uh, you know, depending on the sector, but let's take football, for example, um, you know, determining uh, the valuation. So what makes up brand income is their current and future NFL playing contracts, mm -hmm. their endorsements, appearance fees, and importantly, their post-career. So should they go into broadcasting or TV or what have you? So um, the first key component then is to look at how long, what's the estimate on how long the player is going to play? And so we have uh, a quant team that basically builds out an econometric model to understand and look like in the case of Vernon Davis, we looked at all tight ends that were drafted and retired between 1990 and 2010. And that yielded 212 players. Uh, we then looked at what criteria were statistically relevant to career length. There were six elements, things like st st statistical production, durability, injury history, things of that nature. Um, and that model, when you plugged Vernon's data into it, yielded uh, our estimate that uh, you know he would play approximately 14 years. And then once you know how long he's going to play, then you can again look at that data set and look at comps that got contracts in the same time frame that uh, uh, Vernon Davis would be looking at contracts. Um, and ultimately, all of that, coupled with our estimates on his endorsement uh, income based on his historical and his future prospects, that yielded our $62 million estimate for his uh, brand income. What about if the athlete, and I'll stay on the athletes right now because I'm sure valuations have just slight tweak for some of the other industry sectors exactly. you work with. What if they get injured or they retire? I mean, how, do you, how do you work with that? So, um, one, if a player voluntarily retires within two years, we have a clawback so we can get the money back. Um, uh, otherwise, you know, ultimately, uh, it's their decision. They're, uh, you know, in the case of, say, Vernon Davis, he obviously uh, still owns 90% of the brand income. We're only acquiring 10%, so he's motivated to continue to uh, perform and generate income. Uh, from an injury standpoint, um, you know, a catastrophic career-ending injury uh, absolutely is a risk, but it's it's not the common uh, component. What you, what you find with injury is the wear and tear of being an, a player in any sport ultimately uh, impacts your career length. So uh, we account or adjust for that one based on how we derive our estimates. So injury history is a key criteria that drives uh, our model. Um, 
And then the other way we account for it is based on uh, the discount rates we apply to the cash flow stream. So when you look at, uh, again, for the Vernon Davis offering example, the weighted average discount rate was 11.4%. Uh, if you look at a triple C rated junk bond, the yield on that is less than 8.5% today with about a 27.5% first year default rate. So we felt you know, that that was a good compensation for the risk of you know, associated with the cash flow streams. The way this is set up, uh, the, the dividends, do you see that that's going to be a regular uh, byproduct of uh, what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. We see uh, paying a dividend as a, a core component of creating that linkage uh, to the investor. And uh, it's what we think makes the security interesting is, you know, it has this uh, dividend yield component potential associated with it. And at the same time, um, you know, the upside in the post-career side, should they, you know, become a Michael Strahan or what have you. Um, so that that kind of, uh, when we look and talk to investors about the security, it's this uh, return of capital potential on the playing career, uh, coupled with then having this call option on does he play longer, does he end up being a broadcaster or what have you, that's uh, ultimately, we think, drives uh, our desire to play, pay out dividends. Uh, when you go on a road show with this, because this has got to be something brand new for for you know most of the people, they sit in the room, they look, they yawn, they move, move, move they move Absolutely. on. Yep. This has got to be a different road show when when you go on. Tell, bring that out. What what kind of interaction? What kind of feedback are you getting as you do the road shows with these athletes? Yeah, so it's definitely a different road show because it, we're not uh institutional investors are welcome to participate but it's not our target it's really the retail investor um so uh when we kicked off the vernon davis road show we got the old john madden cruiser that you know he didn't never got in an airplane he used to drive around in a tour bus uh -huh. and we went to 13 cities in 13 days about 5,000 miles and uh we invited anyone who wanted to come down uh, to a, a, a local venue, and depending on the city we were in, and we would get anywhere from, you know, 20 to 50, 60 people, and uh, we would go through your traditional roadshow presentation. I, I would gather and guess that the vast majority of which had never been to a roadshow presentation. Um, and it was fascinating, whether it was a professional investor uh, to the fan, they all wanted to know, how do I make money? So uh, it, it, it was a lot of fun. When are you coming to Dallas? There's a bit of sports down here. I mean, a tornado will come on the air, and the guy, the sports announcer, will get upset because they cut away from his from his uh, <laughs> thing. So big time down here with the sports. When are you coming to Dallas? Uh, you know what? That's a great point because we during the Vernon Davis offering, we actually couldn't sell. Uh, we hadn't passed through and gotten registered in the state of Texas. Uh, we actually just got that a couple of weeks ago, so I'm I'm do a trip through Dallas and do a Texas swing, and uh, I'll definitely let you know. I'll, we'll put that on the books. Yeah, you got to bring your athletes on the show. We'll talk about what's going on next. All right, we, uh, Buck, we got to go. We're short on time with you, but I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show. I really appreciate it. Yep, that. enjoyed it. Thanks, Michael. Mind, Have a great day. My, yeah, you too. All right, Fantex, F A N T E X dot com. Go there, check it out. Special thanks to 1 800 Public Relations dot com for all their PR, media, and audience development support for uh, bringing Fantex to the show. I want to thank everybody everybody for participating with us. Uh, please, you, you have all helped us drive new all-time highs in listenership. If there's something that we're not doing you'd like to know about, be, be my guest. Sit, contact us at yorbamedia.com and let us know who's doing good for you so that we can do good for you. Good luck, good trading. We're going to be back again at 2 o'clock with the market updates and our regular cast of what's going to happen next with the market. Talk to you then. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios and the iHeart app as well as yorbamedia.com. All right, we have Buck French, CEO and co-founder of Fantex. 
And uh, this is one of the most uh, interesting um, publicly traded uh, processes I've, I've ever heard about. The exclusive brokerage for stock link to a pro athlete's brand. Am- amazing. Buck, great idea. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having us, Michael. Appreciate right. it. My pleasure. Give us a little background on you, and I want to get right into Fantex and, and what you do and how you do it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I graduated from West Point Harvard Business School and have founded several successful uh, technology companies out in San Francisco. And uh, Fantex is uh, our latest project that we're extremely excited about. All right. Uh, What does Fantex do? So we acquire a minority interest in the future cash flow stream of a professional athlete, uh, for example, Pro Bowl tight end Vernon Davis. And we turn that into a registered security with the SEC, which we offer uh, via our uh, broker-dealer, Fantex.com. So people go to Fantex.com, can actually trade shares that are linked to the underlying cash flow of Vernon Davis. All right. All right. This, this is a very interesting process. A lot of ups and downs, I would think. Tell me how you you. you, you keep that together so that the the investors who are buying the stock um, see an appreciation because I, I know there's a lot of a lot of uh, downsides that, that have to be addressed because nobody wants to buy a stock and watch it go through the through the floor you've got to have something that you put together for that sure so uh, fundamentally uh, what we do is uh, a detailed analysis on how long the player can play mm-hmm. uh, we forecast out their gross cash flow streams and then We do straightforward discounted cash flow analysis to bring it back into present value terms to adjust for risk. So in the case of Vernon Davis, we forecasted uh, he had the potential to make approximately $62 million. Uh, And we adjusted that uh, the weighted average discount rate across all the cash flow streams was 11.4%. So that gave us a $40 million valuation today. And so we acquired that 10% interest in his future cash flow for $4 million. So built in uh, based on our estimates we build in a return uh, for the for the investor wow okay all right um, the uh, he's got a symbol now right yep VNDSL all right Victor Nancy David salary liquid right yep that's it okay all right um, now what about uh, uh, this business with uh, uh, Dave Bernie uh, Dave Byrne yep so Burns. my fellow co-founder Dave Byrne uh, he's the chairman of the company. He's one of the founding five partners at uh, Benchmark Capital, which is, uh, by anyone's estimation, a top one or two Silicon Valley venture firms. Uh, been very successful. They've they've funded some of the top firms in Silicon Valley, uh, eBay, Twitter, uh, companies such as that. Okay. All right. And, and uh, tell me about his part. I'm going to hear the moving parts of, of Fantex because the, that's what people are investing in, not just these pro athletes. Your ability to to actually drive revenues, drive profits uh, into all of these uh, ath- uh, you know these these publicly traded companies and the athletes that you're you're working with. Yeah. So we uh, Dave's obviously a key component chairman of the company. is uh, actively involved with helping us. Uh, recruit athletes, and then our brand management function is really about helping broaden the perspective of the athlete beyond just being a a professional athlete, because by nature that brand will eventually die because they won't be an athlete forever. Mm -hmm. So we bring out uh, other elements of the individual that makes it more of a sustainable brand. Um, And so uh, we use those to help develop uh, an analytics package that allows us to understand the social media footprint and who the audience is so that we can over time migrate that to a sustainable audience uh, by the time they retire. That's our goal. Okay. The the market share and the market size, talk to us about that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you think about there's approximately uh, 3,000 plus professional athletes just in the United States that turns over about 20% a year. Um, you're, you're looking at uh, an overall marketplace uh, that's, you know, in the billions. And uh, our goal is to capture a percentage of that um, that cash flow stream mm-hmm. uh, and then help the athletes enhance and enrich it so that uh, they can generate cash flow for longer. So uh, we think that there's a great opportunity uh, to work with not just football players but across the world of sport. 
How how about uh, the uh, outside the borders of the United States? Have you have you penetrated any of that market? Because like you know the World Cup, it's huge. It's huge. Sure. Yeah, if you throw soccer in uh, or football as they call it, it's uh, it's a it's a even larger market. Um, nope, we're currently focused just on the United States right now. Um, get the marketplace up and running at fantex.com, and then we'll uh, we'll ultimately definitely look outside the U.S. borders and. And soccer is a natural one for us to, to target. It is. Uh, uh, the the internals of your company, and we've got a couple of minutes left in uh, in this side because everybody wants to know about this future plans, the internals of of your company, and how it's going with with getting these pro athletes to sign up with you and and go through this process. To, I, I'm sure at, at worst it's a massive ego boost. Hey, I'm I'm a publicly traded brand. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I would gather that's no different than any CEO of a public company, the same, same thing, you know. Um, yeah, no, uh, it, it's going very well. We're excited to be working with uh, Vernon Davis. Uh, we're currently uh, open. We're on the road show for uh, Fantex EJ Manuel, so the starting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, people can actually go to Fantex.com today and reserve shares in his uh, IPO. Um, we also filed a registration statement for Mohamed Sanu, wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. So um, we continue to make uh, great progress in building a pipeline and signing professional athletes. And, um, you know, we are excited that after we close the Vernon Davis transaction uh, uh, and that, that stock is now trading in the secondary market uh, about uh, 30 days after we, we closed the transaction, we announced a $0.70 cent per share dividend uh, for holders of uh, Fantex Vernon Davis. So um, we are signing the athletes, collecting the brand income that we acquire, and uh, distributing a portion of that out as a, as a dividend to the shareholders. God, you know, I just had a thought. Uh, I, I, the, the, the fans of these athletes have got to be, uh, they've got to have it. You know what I mean? They, they've got all the memorabilia. Why not own the stock? Why not own some of the stock that's linked to it? Exactly. Uh, and, you know, interesting uh, the the fan is definitely uh, participating, and and so are you know your traditional investors because at the end of the day it's an interesting asset class that's linked to that true cash flow stream. And so, you know we have a maximum purchase amount of five percent of an offering, and so you know we had you know we had people buy the minimum which was one share, and we had people buy the maximum which was you know a couple hundred thousand dollars. So. Uh, it's an interesting investment that also has this fun fan element associated with it. I can see that. I mean, have you ever thought about uh, going into, like, NASCAR? I mean, those fans are absolutely crazy <laughs> about their sure. memorabilia and such. The, the NASCAR is definitely a target we would consider. Uh, you know, right now we're focusing on uh, uh, the major sports that are aligned with uh, fantasy sports because it has that natural segue. Um, but absolutely, NASCAR uh, is something we would uh, we would look at in the future. Now, these athletes, when they come in and they go through the you know the, the uh, registration process to 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 become a publicly traded brand on, on their own name, uh, they uh, they are act, uh, also participants in the uh, in the stock. I take it. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, they, they, uh, is there a regulation that says no? You can't do that. Correct, because otherwise they'd be a promoter of the security and or a co-issuer. So um, what we do is we sign the contract with the athlete to acquire that future cash flow stream, and then the contract that we sign with the athlete becomes the basis for the security. So um, uh, they, they are not allowed by uh, SEC rules to participate in the offering process. Uh, they can talk about why they did Fantex 40 days after the transaction closes. So uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, uh, Vernon Davis you know, was able to finally talk why he did Fantex, and he was down on the stock exchange with uh, uh, being interviewed in other places. And so we, uh, other than that, though, the athlete can't participate. Got it. All right, well, let's let's take a break right now. Uh, but before we go, please, contact information so, our, so all the fans of, of the, what you're doing can see uh, and know better what we just spoke about. Yeah, for those who are interested, you can go to uh, Fantex.com. It's F-A-N-T-E-X.com, and actually check it out and uh, participate if interested. All right, we'll be right back with Buck French, CEO, Fantex.com, and special thanks to 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR, media, and audience development support. We'll be right back. <laughs> 